All right, folks, this video is going to feature three examples of conservation of momentum problems worked out. Let's start with example one. This is going to be an elastic collision when objects are bouncing off of each other. At the bowling alley, a player rolls a 5.4 kilogram bowling ball. Here's a 5.4 kilogram bowling ball. I'm going to draw it right here. There's the mass with a speed of six meters per second towards a pin. Here's the bowling pin with a mass of one and a half kilograms and it's starting at rest. After the collision, the pin bounces away. So here it goes, it's gonna bounce off to the right with a speed of 12.7 meters per second. Determine the speed of the bowling ball after its collision with the pin. So after the collision, we wanna know this unknown velocity and we know that the pin is moving to the right with 12.7 meters per second. So can we use conservation of momentum to figure out how fast the bowling ball is moving afterwards? Yes, we can. So we're gonna start by identifying this as an elastic collision, which by the way, is actually defined as a collision where kinetic energy is conserved. That's the real definition. And we're gonna start with the elastic collision equation uh, here mass and velocity of object one, which is the bowling ball, plus the mass and velocity of object two, which is the bowling pin, before the collision is gonna be equal to the mass and velocity of the bowling ball after, plus the mass and velocity of the bowling pin after. So plugging in the numbers, um, doing a little bit of algebra over here, noting that since the bowling pin has no velocity to begin with, it has no momentum. Um, Doing a little bit of algebra, we find out that the velocity of the bowling ball afterwards is 12 point, uh, excuse me, 2.47 meters per second. Let's try another example. In a head-on collision, an 1,100 kilogram sports car, here it is traveling to the right at 85 miles per hour or 38 meters per second. So I'm gonna grab that velocity in meters per second. Hits a 1600 kilogram SUV traveling to the left at 65 miles per hour or 29 meters per second. So I'm gonna grab that SUV here. We have its mass and its velocity. As they hit each other, they're gonna to stick together during the collision. So determine their velocity after the collision. So here's our unknown. How fast are they going to be going um, after they collide and after they stick together? Notice we don't even know which way are they going to go to the right or to the left. Um, so we're going to do the math. First of all, we're going to identify this as an inelastic collision because they're sticking. And in an inelastic collision, we can start here by saying that the mass and velocity of the first object, which is the sports car, plus the mass and velocity of the second object, which is the SUV before the collision, will be equal to the mass and velocity of the combined uh, cars here once they stick together. So the total momentum before is gonna be equal to the total momentum after. So let's plug in our numbers. Uh, we have the mass and velocity of the sports car. We have the mass and velocity of the SUV. Uh, one thing that a lot of students miss here is um, in the problem statement, I said that the SUV was traveling to the left. And so that means you need to insert negative. It's negative 29 meters per second to show that it's going to the left. And then setting that equal to uh, the combined mass of both cars after they stick together and then the unknown velocity. And so doing the math, we end up getting uh, 1.7 meters per second negative meaning it's to the left. So after they collide, uh, it turns out that um, they're gonna go this way. The final velocity will be to the left. So um, why? Why are they going to the left afterwards? How do we explain this? Well, the SUV to begin with had more momentum. Can we see that? Can we see that the SUV had more momentum? So. Um, this SUV was going uh, 29 meters per second with a mass of 1,600 kilograms. 
whereas the sports car only had 1,100 kilograms of mass and was going 38 meters per second. So if you multiply these out, the SUV actually has more momentum than the sports car does. Therefore, the SUV, SUV's leftward direction is going to end up winning, which is why the two cars end up going to the left, and that's where we get this negative. And that's what I say here. Um, since the SUV initially had more momentum than the sports car, the cars move in the direction of the SUV after the collision, meaning to the left. Okay, let's finish up with one more. Uh, example three over here. Okay, this is an example of an explosion. On the 4th of July, a student lights a firecracker on his neighborhood street. Before the explosion, the firecracker is initially at rest and has a mass of one kilogram. Here's our one kilogram firecracker. It's at rest, so its velocity is zero meters per second. After the explosion, the firecracker breaks into two pieces, which is a little bit unrealistic. One piece with a mass of 0.32 kilograms shoots to the right. So here's one part shooting to the right with a velocity of 48.7 meters per second. And the other piece, is going to be the leftover mass, which is just one kilogram minus 0.32, so we get 0.68 kilograms. And we want to know how fast is that piece moving to the left. So this is an explosion where we have one piece breaking into two. So we are going to start with the explosion equation over here and say that the, the combined mass of both pieces here times its velocity is going to be equal to the momentum of the left piece plus the momentum of the piece on the right. And that's what I'm showing here. So uh, plugging in the numbers, the combined mass is a kilogram. Initial velocity is zero. Adding the masses and velocities of the other two pieces and then solving for this unknown velocity, we get that the, um, the piece on the left is going to move at negative 22.9 meters per second. Now, uh, one final question to check for understanding. This piece had no momentum to begin with. And if conservation of momentum is true, then the total momentum afterwards should also be no momentum or zero. So how is it possible for there to be zero momentum to begin with here, and then for there to be zero total momentum here after the explosion? Well, remember, the piece on the left is moving to the left, and so it has negative momentum. The piece on the right is moving to the right, and so it has positive momentum. And the negative and the positive momenta will cancel each other out so that the total momentum is, in fact, zero after the explosion. Momentum is conserved. Thanks for watching.